what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm mode ij and we are locked in this is all american episode five now we know last week we had that all-star game we seen jordan actually get in as a backup and do his thing spencer was in there him and cam they squashed their beef they was even going against the other team as teammates but also with spencer we always know it's something he tried to turn down the toledo scholarship but i i, I since billy turned it down Spencer, you ain't going nowhere. But before we get into this episode, shout out to the notification game. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now, we pick up where we left off. We know that Spencer's in a little bind here. You sign that contract, you need to honor it. So let's jump into it. This is episode five, All American. Now, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I do know a few things. And if you listen to me, hey, I'm usually right 70% mm, of the time. But Spencer, he signed that contract. Now, you always hear people, even with Coop, you hear people saying, oh, man, they screwed me over in the contract. No, Spencer, you committed to that school. You said, I'm going to Toledo. You signed your name. Now you don't want to go. It doesn't matter. You need to honor that contract. When I joined the military, I signed that dotted line. When I went there and went to basic training, what? No. Oh, I don't want to go. You need to honor your contract. You signed it. It's on you. But Billy's saying, look, I got a little convention going on. Some of the coaches are going to be here. So Spencer, he's trying to find other schools that will show interest. But we know at this late in the season, no one's really looking for him, especially after being shot. But Laura Baker said, you know, we're going to try to get you out of this trade protocol. We're going to see where that goes, though. Patience is in the studio. We know Layla's making that thing work. You know what I'm saying? We got Coop about the way. We got a new artist that's going to pick up, take over where Coop left off because we still own all these songs. Now, what Layla is trying to do is tell Patience, I want you to headline on my tour. You know, people know about you. The record label, the record stores, they're asking about Coop. But since she's gone, won't you be the face of this tour? You know, we already know you can write hits. But Patience is saying it feels a little weird taking Coop's spot. But this is an opportunity. Coop is the one that was trying to hold her back. You remember the original contract with JP? He was like, I just want Patience, not Coop. And Coop was low-key hating. No matter of fact, Coop was hating. It wasn't low-key. was right there in the face. So I say, Patience, you should go ahead and get on this road. Coop don't want to rap anyway. Liv is out here making moves. We know she's trying to get it into a media outlet so she had an interview and she had things to go now this young lady's name is sarah and she comes up and tells Liv, hey the piece you did were gaining your family's trust that actually motivated me to move forward so Liv, she's hearing this and she's thinking oh my work is actually touching people so i think what she's going to have this season when she starts getting into this her little internship she's going to start writing things that everyone's going to be able to relate to and it's actually going to be able to motivate others especially spencer to move forward and do what they want chase their dreams now toledo i won't even say they playing dirty ball because spencer signed on that line he said spencer james commits to toledo state so now they're releasing information that spencer isn't a team player you can't really trust them out there. That's not hardball. This is the truth, Spencer. You left your team in the middle of a championship game. Now, I'm all for Spencer. I'm team Spencer. But the truth is, you're not a team player. You left your team for Coop. When we out here playing a game, we lose the championship. Now, you committed to a school and you're trying to decommit. Toledo State is doing everything that they have the right to do, especially with players getting paid now. Because I know the real Spencer Jane was back in, back in the day. But this is 2021. People are getting paid. Bringing a person in like Spencer James brings more money into the school. So now you messing with the school's money, Spencer. Billy comes out. We see all the players, Beverly Hills, Crenshaw. We all here together. But guess what? I'm going to go ahead and set up a combine for you. And what a combine is, is pretty much where the players show off their talent. We've seen a little pre-player uh, combine that they had a couple of seasons ago where Asher wasn't allowed to participate. But Billy, he's using his resources and bringing in other coaches. So, you know, everyone can have a chance to be seen even after all of the big recruits have been taken. JJ brings in Jordan and Asher. Now, y'all know I rock with JJ. He's the realest one on the show. He really don't give a damn, but he's going to get stuff done. Now, he has a guy with a camera talking about, I'm about to document all of our last days. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be out there playing quarterback. And that's always been JJ's dream. Even though he didn't start off as a quarterback, almost every kid's dream is to be a quarterback. That's the number one position. But Jordan and Asher is saying, hey, you should go back to playing linebacker what you're normally doing because you want to go to D1. You want people to see you for what you really are. But 
JJ's betting on himself, and that's one thing I like about this kid. No matter what's going on, hey, we're going to make it happen. So quarterback it is. Spencer's at our favorite place, the Crenshaw Cafe. And this guy named Boone comes in, and he actually used to coach with guess who? Spencer's father over at Eastern Nevada. So he comes in, he's like, oh, Spencer, you remember me? I met you, you know what I'm saying, at your dad's funeral. And he's like, oh, okay, I remember you. So what he's doing is pretty much talking to Spencer and he's telling him, hey, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of stories. Me and you should get up and we could talk about it. And this is easily a gateway, you know, a door opening for him to try to get into Eastern Nevada. His dad coached there. Why not go play football there? So we're going to see how this plays out. While Liv is in here talking to everybody about the things that she's been going through, there's a young lady on her phone and Liv is telling some deep stuff. Everybody's over there listening. Like, mm. Yeah, that's deep. And this girl's just over here texting and she got the sound on. So when every every button she hit, ta -ta 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 -ta, like I can't do that. My phone stays on silent. If you call me, hey, I'll call you back. But she gets up and leaves after she hears something that seemed like she didn't like what Liv was talking about. Now Liv goes over to her therapist and she asks, what's up with that girl? And she's telling her, she normally does this. She has a court order, meaning her parents make her go here she doesn't want to go here it's not voluntary like how Liv is doing she's forced to go here she has to be here and Liv is does she always leave like that nah it was something that Liv said and now her therapist is saying since you're closer in age to her you probably need to go talk to her because sometimes it's not who is telling you the information it's who is telling you the information meaning someone that looks like you someone around your age more than likely someone's going to listen to them than someone older because it's like uh, you really don't know what I'm going through but when it's someone your age and they've been through it and they're experiencing the same thing, maybe the year before you, you're more than likely to listen to them unless you're close to that older person. Hey, it's the day of the combine. And, you know, Spencer, his head's just running. Hey, get focused on football. And Billy's telling him, hey, just be cool. And Coach Boone actually shows up. But guess what? He's not with Eastern Nevada. He actually a receiver coach at another school. What does Spencer play? Receiver. But Billy is telling him, don't worry about these recruiters. You know what I'm saying? Go out there, play your game, and stay confident. But now Spencer, you already know in his head it's, oh, man, Coach, I messed up, man. They're not going to. Spencer, just get focused. Everyone's going to mess up. No one's ever perfect. But we got to get you out there because we got to get you into another school. You got Toledo State coach out there. He low-key hating, looking around like Spencer better not be doing good. And then Spencer runs his 40. They got him at, it looks like a 4-3-1. I'm like, okay, he's fast. Let's try to get down to that 4-2. You know what I'm saying? You get that 4-2, it's going to really look good. We got a coach from Bucksport University, wherever the hell that is. But he's like, oh, man, Spencer's a beast. Nice size, good form, good speed. And Billy's like, yeah, he's a beast in school, too. 3.9 GPA. He's talking about he graduating with honors. But the coach says, can we trust him? We know Toledo State was building the whole offense around him. Can we trust him? And Billy's like, uh, yeah. Well, that's going to be glooming over Spencer's head. Toledo State is bigger than Bucksport or, <laughs> or wherever they're from. So, of course, they're going to hear that. And they're like, well. Do we really want to risk putting our, you know what I'm saying, a scholarship in Spencer's hand? Coop is talking to Preacher's daughter. We know she's been babysitting her and she ain't writing no raps. But in comes Patience and she gives Coop a kiss. And Amina's looking around like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go outside. Now, she went on a road trip with her dad to the bay to try to get her mind off of it. But it doesn't look like it's happening. Now, Patience is over here. And she hasn't told Coop that her and Layla might be potentially getting on the road and going on tour and Liv comes over and like patience that song is good Layla plays it every night because you know Layla's staying over there with Liv and Coop is like what what's going on here so patience is gonna have to break the news to Coop that uh yeah I'm going on tour kind of uh the headline for Layla's tour because you gone and of course we get the infamous Coop look yeah Coop you getting lost in the sauce, man. We moving on. We ain't. The train is not stopping. You better get on or get left. Now, JJ, he gets out there. You know, he cocky. He got the cutoff on. He's slanging that pig skin. I'm talking about. <laughs> he makes a couple of passes. He getting hyped. Talking about all day, baby. But as we get to like throw five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 20, 20, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 80, 80. He's messing up bad. So he goes over there. He tells the guy, man, cut the camera off, man. You see me messing up. And Asher tells coach, hold on, I got this. And he's telling them, JJ, get back to what you really do. You play linebacker. This is what we were talking about. Your best position is at the linebacker. So why be quarterback when this is what you've been doing your whole career? 
So we got to get JJ back over to where he's naturally at, that linebacker position. Patience is talking to Liv, and you know, Liv has to get it off her chest. They want me to be a sponsor of this little girl, Jen, but she don't be paying no attention, and I'm busy for that. You know, I got this internship going on. I got a lot going on. But Patience is saying, you've been there before. You're probably one of the best people for this. And around the corner, we hear somebody on the phone. It's Jen, and she's at the school because her cousin is allegedly one of the football players at the combine. Now, I don't know why Liv is up here besides her dad's there, but you know, these schools, they don't care who walks around them. You ain't gotta have no school ID. This is 2021, come on people. We know in order to be inside these schools, they gonna make sure you have ID so we know who's supposed to be here and who isn't. But of course her dad is the coach, so she may have, you know, free roam around the whole school. Chris and Jordan, they're having a little debate on who's going to throw Spencer the ball during this combine because they want to look good. They know Spencer is going to catch everything. Now, outside of these two, Darnell is the only person that actually threw passes to Spencer. But we know Darnell's over in BMF making some money in the streets right now. You know what I'm saying? Terry. But Spencer, he's coming up with an idea because he doesn't want to have to pick between his two friends. Spencer decides to let them both throw the ball. Well, this is an unofficial combine. That's what I would have said. Just have both quarterbacks there, run a route, next person up, run a route, and they just alternate on throwing it to them, and then they both get to throw to Spencer. But I'm talking about Jordan's throwing passes where Spencer got to go up and go get them. Now, if I'm a quarterback coach, I'm looking at, why are you throwing these incomplete passes? There's no one holding them. Get the ball to him. He shouldn't have to jump for these passes. But, hey, who cares? It looks good. You know what I'm saying? They went viral. You remember the pass from Jordan to Spencer that went viral. Jen and Liv, they go outside because they're both there for the combine. We know she's dating Spencer. Her brother Jordan's out there. Jen's cousin, he plays for South Crenshaw. Never seen him before in our lives. But she's saying Crenshaw won. Now they're talking and they're starting to open up to each other and seeing that they have more in common. Now, she knows a lot about football because of her cousin, but she was also in ballet. Liv was, too. Now, what Liv is saying, was it, you know, some um, prescription pills that you were on to stay focused? And she's saying, yeah, my mom called me sniffing it up. I mean, there's a show on Netflix called, I mean, on Hulu called uh, Dope Sick. And it talks about the oxy, you know what I'm saying, and how that epidemic came about. But those pain pills and everything that you're taking, they can be addictive. So she's trying to tell Liv, I'm not addicted to these pain pills, these prescriptions. And normally they are. They may say they're not, but they are. If you're at to the point where you're sniffing them, because that'll give you a, we're not going to talk about that. It just give you a better rush. It goes straight to boom like that because it's all broken down in the little time release coat on it. Yeah. But she's telling Liv exactly what I was saying earlier. Most people, they'll relate to someone that's going through the same situation that they are. And she's telling Liv, you're younger, you're cool, you know, and you're chill. But Liv has a lot on her plate and she doesn't know if she really wants to do all of this. JJ switched to linebacker, and I'm talking about he's going off. It's like five straight interceptions. What I'm thinking, if I'm one of the coaches out here recruiting, whoever's playing quarterback, pack your bag up and go home because if you're throwing all these interceptions out here and it's just one-on-one -on -one drills, <laughs> we don't want you because in the real game, it's over with. Billy comes in and says, hey, JJ, uh, real quick, there's a coach out there that wants to talk to you. Oh, Spencer, there's a couple of schools, like three of them that's showing interest in you. Spencer's like, what, 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 what about Jay? What about Jordan? Uh, there's some interest, but don't nobody want to talk to you. But we see Jordan starting to come to reality. Hey, Dad, I'm cool with playing Juco. Now he's being humble because if you remember the guy that he met last week at the, the All-Star game, he was saying, just look at it like this. You had an opportunity to play on the biggest stage that a high school player could play on. And you got two rings. That's more than what 99.99% of any high school player is ever going to get in life. Now, Coop, she's at the Crenshaw Cafe, our favorite place, and she's looking at a video of her and Patience, and they were going over one of the old songs. Preacher's daughter comes over, and she wants to talk to her about, you know, one of her homeboys in school, talking about he may be getting in trouble. Now, Coop, what she does is give her a lesson in life, and she basically says, sometimes doing things for friends are what you have to do, but also, you need to look out for yourself, and that's just playing on what, she's going, what she has going on with Layla, and also what she had going on with Spencer. So, she's taking her life experience and giving it to Preacher's daughter, and that's good, because Coop is starting to realize some of the things I was doing wasn't right, but she doesn't want to lead this young girl down that same bad path. JJ comes over and he's excited because you remember there was one coach that wanted to talk to him. Well, 
guess what? It's coastal California. You remember the scholarship that they gave to Asher, but they took away from Asher because of his injury? And he's hyped, but he didn't know that. You see Jordan talking about it. Because you know that's going to hurt Asher. They pretty much gave his scholarship to JJ. But in JJ's part, congratulations, man. What Asher had going on, that's his personal problem, man. There's nothing you can do about that. That's between him and the man above. You ain't got no control of it. Of course, Spencer gets offered a scholarship from all three schools. And when he's talking to Billy and Grace about it, they're excited. That's big news. But of course, we had this rain cloud above our head in Toledo State. They're still holding that against Spencer. And of course, he's like, this may take all summer. I might not be able to go. Spencer, you got to look at the positive side. Look at these three schools and talk to them. Say, all right, yeah, I like to come to school number two for this reason. I go to school three for this reason. And just let them know the situation that you're in so they can actually help you. So, hey, contingent to me getting out of this contract with Toledo State, I'm become, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to come to y'all school. But Spencer don't think like that. He just, oh, but this is it. Like, come on, Spencer, get right, bro. Coach Kenny comes over and he's like, yeah, me showing up at Crenshaw, it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't to actually talk to you. That was an accident. But I did show up to the combine on purpose. And you did a good job out there. I want to offer you a scholarship. Now, what he's doing is using Corey as a throw that bait out there yeah your dad he used to always talk about you coming home to see you man it'd be it'd be amazing to play with you but now there's a song called smiling faces a smile is just a frown turned upside down meaning hey just because he's doing this if he wants you that bad then all right i need to have this 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 and this for me to accept the scholarship from you because you're gonna get there and you're not gonna be anything but just another player out there but he also tells spencer you know Weigh your options out. And if you don't get to play your, you know what I'm saying, your freshman year because of the Toledo State stuff, then come on. I'll wait on you. But now they have, you can, you know what I'm saying, you can transfer schools, a transfer protocol in college. You can go the same year nowadays. Toledo State's coach comes in. He's talking to Billy. Now, Billy has a game plan. And what he's doing is kind of reverse psychology in a sense. Now, he's saying Spencer committed to coming to our school. And he's saying, well, you know, when there's a change in the coaching staff, kids are normally allowed to switch up schools because we know the only reason Spencer was going there was because of Dante. Now, Billy's saying, you can either let Spencer go or I'm going to make sure that everybody, every recruit going to Toledo State from here on out, they're going to see how dirty of a coach you are. And, you know, cancel culture, get you up out of there in mm, 24 hours. Now, that is true. Normally, you know, when there's coaching changes, players usually redact they, you know, they signature, but they still have the rights to you. They don't own you, but you can't play anywhere else unless they release you. Coop pulls up on patience and she's in there. She's in her mode, writing some things. And Coop is really coming to give her support. You remember she was talking to Amina and saying what you need to do for a friend. Sometimes you need to make sure yourself is good. Now, Patience is saying, you should come on the road with me so we can get some alone time. They get to kissing and stuff. But Coop is saying, nah, I can't do that right now. I can't leave Amina. I'm the reason her mom is dead and I need to be there for her. No, you're not the reason her mom is dead. Tyrone is the reason she's dead. Preach is the reason she's dead. Mo is the reason Mo is dead. She shouldn't have shot at you. Preach wouldn't have shot her. But she's staying here and she's trying to help Amina. Patience understands it. But at the same time, this ain't your kid. Y'all kids. You in high school. You ain't got your GED. You don't need to be babysitting. You need to get out here and get back in this rap game and get some money. Get on tour or something. Besides sitting around helping this kid on her school projects. Billy gets home and Jordan, you know, he's kind of excited. He's talking to his dad. But at this point, we know he doesn't have any offers, just interest. Because he's like, I'm going to go to JUCO, junior college. Not bad. Go one, two years. Prove yourself. Go to a D1. Pick up where you left off. But in the kitchen, it's the coach from Coastal Angeles. I guess it's a school in, in Los Angeles. This is the same school that Kenny coaches at. And I told you guys that Spencer and Jordan, they may end up going to the same school. But he's offering them a preferred walk-on. So it's not a scholarship. A preferred walk-on is they won't give you any financial assistance, but the coach wants you on the team, meaning you're more than likely going to play. You know what I'm saying? So this is good. And they don't really need any financial assistance. We got Billy and we got lawyer to lawyer. <laughs> 
Now, it seems like everything is falling into place. Jordan got the preferred walk on at Coastal Angeles. And uh, Billy, he's over here with his hands crossed like he's coaching the game again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Spencer, I talked to uh, the coach from Toledo State. You're a free man. So what did I just say? This is looking like it's lining up for both of them to go to school together. And then we might have All-American, the college years. Hmm, wouldn't that be nice? I told you everything is starting to look up. We about to have maybe the next episode of All-American is the first All-American with no drama. JJ goes over and he talks to Asher. They make up. Liv comes in here and talks to Jen and says, look, I'm not going to be your enabler. I'm doing this because I like you and I want to help. So it's like, hey, everything is good. All we have to do is get Coop in line and we might have a decent episode of All-American where we ain't got to worry about who's about to do something silly next. I spoke too soon though, because we get to see Coop and she's over here. She's looking at her phone. She sees Layla and Patience. She's, man, they kicking it. <sighs> Coop, what's next? Now, while Coop is over there in her feelings, looking at Patience and Layla getting ready to go on this tour, I'm talking about we making some money. Amina's over here looking at the computer. Now, you remember the freestyle she had against Little Fizz where he called her the Grim Reaper of the Hood? Well, someone on YouTube put a link up there. Up, oh, Sean's dead. Was that because of Coop? Mm, pretty much, yeah, because she missed the drop and then he was trying to get up out of there. Uncle Tyrone, he dead. Why? Coop, <laughs> she told on him. Mo, mama, she dead. Why? Because she uh, was trying to get even with Coop for getting her brother, you know what I'm saying, knocked off and set up. So Amina, she's over here doing some work over here. Whole time Amina was talking about her friend messing up. It's cool. She talking about, oh, he's still my friend. I'm going to stay around for a little bit. I mean, really, what's she going to do at six, seven years old, eight years old, however old she is? Like, she ain't really going to be able to put no paws on her unless she gets a gun somewhere. She can't really harm Coop. But, Coop, you need to get on the road. You just told her to make sure yourself is good. Get out of here, man. Get back into rap. Spence comes too, and we not going to Toledo State. We playing at home. That was always the dream, UCLA, right? Well, now nah, we get Golden Angeles now. And plus, Coach Kenny, he a receiver coach, and he knew Corey. And we're going to have Jordan there throwing us them passes. So things, they working out. All you got to do is just wait, and your time will come. There you go, episode five of All American. Let me know what you think about the whole Coop situation. Do you think Amina's gonna have somebody, maybe a cousin, you know, saying another uncle, somebody come at Coop? I wanna see how that actually plays out. And do you think that Jordan and Spencer are gonna be a nice combination out there? Let me know what you guys think. I'm Old IJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.